Hello, everybody. Dr. Steve Federico uh, from Denver Health, uh, back again to talk to uh, Family DPS all about uh, COVID. So we are in the third week of January, um, well into our Omicron peak. Um, and I think kudos to our Denver community uh, for continuing to do the best that we can with what we've got. Um, and what we've got is uh, continued sustained high rates of COVID. Fortunately, uh, many of our predictions uh, have been correct uh, in that COVID spread very rapidly through our community, um, which um, with a, for the most part, a much less severe disease than its predecessors. Um, but many students, many faculty, many families um, have had COVID at home um, now uh, after the last four to five weeks um, here in the Denver community. Fortunately, we're starting to see a decline in the number of rates. Um, we see that in the number of cases of COVID. We see that in the number of tests that are coming back positive. We also see that in the overall number of tests being requested by families. Um, so I think all good news, and I think we are um, going to see a significant decline uh, of COVID in our community over the next two weeks. Um, we've had a lot of absences. We've had a lot of teachers out. Uh, fortunately, uh, many of them are back in action. Um, most of them have stayed um, healthy. And um, I'm hopeful that the pressure on our schools uh, will be less over the next couple of weeks. As the story unfolded in the beginning, um, we saw that it was an aggressive virus um, that had the potential to cause very severe disease. Many people ended up in the hospital or in the intensive care unit, um, largely because of pneumonia. And if you were an older person, you had a very high risk of getting really, really sick and potentially dying. Made further complicated by the fact that we knew very little about how to treat those patients when they got really, really sick. Fast forward almost two years later, the virus is acting very differently now. It transmits easier, at least the current variant Omicron, but it causes less severe disease in most people. Some people still get really sick, unfortunately, but many fewer than before. It is more of an upper respiratory infection than its predecessors, which were much more lower and so we're seeing fewer patients with pneumonia, for example. So the virus is different. The second thing is different is our bodies are different. Many of us have some element of immunity. Some of us have had COVID. Fortunately in Denver, many of us have been vaccinated. So we're much more protected, which is also helping the cases of COVID that we do get be less severe. The other thing um, that's different is, um, the medical community has learned so much about COVID that when people do get sick or they are older and at higher risk, we now have tools to help them. We have different kinds of medicines, either both those that you take by mouth or those that you put in an IV. Um, we know what to do uh, to help people breathe better um, in ways that we didn't know before. So the risk to an individual is, has gone down slowly over time, over the course of those two years. So that's one of the many reasons why the recommendations continue to change about what to do when you have COVID or when you're exposed. Fortunately, in Denver in particular, um, we have a very highly vaccinated community. Um, and in particular, in our school buildings, in our DPS community, we have a, a vaccine mandate for our staff and the vast majority have been vaccinated or compliant with that uh, mandate. Our students have done a fantastic job of getting out and getting vaccinated, most especially our teens, and now they're getting out getting boosted, conferring even more protection for our community. And along with our DPS-5, which requires all of us to mask while we're in our buildings, um, we have in the workplace that is DPS or the school place that is DPS, one of the safer places to be around people um, in our community. I know personally, um, I feel safe when I send my kids to school every day in DPS.
in an effort to protect um, our community, those who are at risk, most especially older folks. Um, we've made many decisions along the way, including uh, at times having to close our school buildings and have our kids not be around each other, not be around teachers and other trusted adults, not be learn, not learn, not be in a in a place to learn, um, in a place that feels comfortable um, all of the time. As a result, we see a significant uh, impact on their social emotional development, on their uh, mental and behavioral health. Um, as well, in some cases, their physical health, um, increasing rates of obesity, amongst other things. You know, I think as, as a pediatrician at this point in time, um, I'm incredibly worried about you know, mental health and the social emotional development um, and the other health impacts um, that run tangential to COVID. So I think it's important more important now than ever to make sure that we do everything we can to have our kids um, in as much a normal routine as possible. Um, schools, activities, friends. We have to be mindful of COVID. Um, we have to limit the risk. But I think at this point in time, um, we can do that in the school setting quite effectively and we should continue to do so to limit the impact uh, of those other health effects.